Well, welcome everybody. What a great roll up. Congratulations. 201 years ago, the first legislation was passed in the House of Lords in England. It was called the Cattle Protection Act. It was the first legislation in the world to protect animals. It took Lord Richard Martin, otherwise known as Humanity Dick, to pass five years, five separate attempts to bring legislation into the House just to protect an animal from cruelty. And finally he was helped by a philosopher, Jeremy Bentham, who suggested that in the deliberations in the House, to talk about a fundamental fact that has been shown by good science of the time. We're looking 201 years ago. And so the argument that finally got bill, the bill into legislation to be proclaimed as an act, the argument that was used was it is not a matter of whether they can think or reason. It is a matter of whether they can suffer. And that argument was co cogently presented and put and got the more conservative lords over the line and it passed. Now this legislation passed before children were protected at all. <laughs> they were sending children down mines and they suddenly realised, hmm. So they had to use the principles of the Animal Protection Act to argue for the protection of children, which is quite extraordinary. But I think it says a lot. A friend of mine who saw the pictures of this exhibition said, well, that is really quite arresting. It stops you in your tracks. Because this wonderful artist is putting a question. And the question is, it doesn't matter whether they can think or reason or they're hated, or despised, or they're loathed, or they're experimented upon, they can suffer. And this is why this ex exhibition of the misunderstood animals is extremely important, because it asks us to question any notion or belief or idea about an animal. So look at the rat, and don't think rat. Look at the sentient being with all of its interests. The crow. Put aside all of the conditioning and uh, inferences that it's associated with cruelty and, and evil and harm. They have families, they're intelligent, they like to play, and they like to give us a hard time if it suits them. And well deserved. And then of course there's the rooster which uh, upsets a lot of neighbours. If you have rescued roosters, if any of you rescued them, they can be a bit of a problem, apparently. But when you look at a rooster and watch it, without putting all, with putting all that aside, you see an extraordinary animal. And that's what this exhibition is about. And I'm going to um, just offer one song, which I think Fits. I've slightly amended it. I hope uh, Leonard Bernstein's not too upset with me doing that. <laughs> he hasn't said anything. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a place for them Somewhere a place for them Peace and quiet and open air wait for them somewhere. There's a time for them, a time and a place for them, time together with time to share. Time to learn, time to care, someday, somehow, we'll find a new way of living, we'll find 
find a way of giving somewhere. There is a place for them, a time and a place for them. Hold that moment and you're halfway there. Seize that day and it'll take you there someday, somehow. introduce to you uh, Patricia or Trish Woods. We have been singing together, and it's scary when you look back <laughs> for over 32 years on and off. Um, and actually we've sung together to raise money for animal liberation, raise money for Animals Australia to fight live export, and we also were raising money for the highly controversial MacKillop House which was the first hospice established by Sister MacKillop, who later became a saint, um, who, who set up that hospice, even though the Pope said she shouldn't. <laughs> so she became a saint and helped a lot of very, very sick people, people who were cast aside, who were ignored, and who were despised. So it all comes together, and I really want to thank this beautiful human being with his absolutely glorious voice that you're about to hear, who is going to sing Amazing Grace. Grace is quite an extraordinary thing when you, when you look closely at it. And I think um, this is one of the things that Rhonda has brought for us, is that she understands grace. And if you look at the history of the song, uh, amazing Grace. It actually, there is a, it is a lot of evidence to say that it was, it was written when a person finally saw what we were doing in the slave trade. And this is why there was the film called Amazing Grace with Mr. Wilberforce. And his mate, Martin, um, Richard Martin, who brought in the first legislation to protect animals, they were friends and they were on the same wavelength. Patricia, thank you. If I get a frog in my throat, it's Mark's fault. Because when I walked into the room yes. and I saw this, <laughs> I adoringly. <laughs> yeah, it looks so benevolent. <laughs> Now I do sing all the time, so I beg forgiveness for singing with words, not as good as Mark in remembering the words for different things. Mark asked me to do Amazing Grace Nana Mascuri style. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> not a hard ask at all. The good part is she sings three verses, the three most important verses. I know all the verses and I get them all mixed up. So, <laughs> I would like anybody who is comfortable to close your eyes while I sing to you. Mark taught me 32 years ago that our job is to be a voice for animals. So I stand here and every time I do for animal rights, animal justice party, Anything that I get invited to, it's not about me, it's about being a voice for them. Yeah. So if you're comfortable, close your eyes and I hope the sound will be Nana-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! 
with that voice next to you doing duets and things. Just an inspiration. But one of our interesting um, signature duets, which we've done numerous times, which actually relates to this, because cats are pretty mis misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't keep it that way, I think. <laughs> um, so we've sung uh, Giacomino uh, Rossini's cat duet. And we've left our scent when we're doing it, we're... <laughs> well, you have. And <laughs> but because when we do it, perform it in uh, people's, uh, wherever, we, we walk around mark, scent marking and trying to, to lure each other. So I think it's actu it actually is important in this, uh, in this context, that particular duet. I'd like to now introduce Nicole Nelms, who's going to perform three pieces. I only know one of them. I, I opened this exhibition, I commissioned this exhibition last year uh, for Rhonda Partridge to do for us. And we opened it in Parliament House in August. I uh, ran for three weeks there and it was very successful. Um, and Nicole Nelms uh, performed then. And the only one I know is the first one, Saw, which is an unbelievable piece of work. But I hope you don't mind, it's, it always reminded me of a particular ancient Chinese fable where about a bear in a, in a circus that didn't perform very well on its mono bicycle in going, trying to go round and round in the circus rather than being in the magnificent mountains and forests of Russia or wherever. Here it is gawking at this bear trying to ride a bicycle around in a circle absurd. It didn't do well, got beaten and beaten and beaten. And then in the late night, it just looked up to the sky and saw the moon and wept. The bear who flew to the moon. Children, it's a wonderful children's fable. They never ask how did it do it. They know it had to. And this first song, Saw, reminds me of that. Here. And there are two others after you. Hello. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see all of your faces here tonight. Um, there has been some issues, so I will not be performing Saw tonight. I'm so sorry. However, I will be playing three brand new original songs that I wrote this past month. The first one is called Wine. Um, I wrote it sitting in my bathtub. Um, Ta-da! <laughs> and the other two pieces I'll be playing are called Lace Intricacies and Like You Are To Me. So I'll start with Wine. Um, I really hope you enjoy them. <laughs>
playing is called Lace Intricacies. I did not write this song in my bathtub. I wrote this song on my bed. So, shaking it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, this song <laughs> is this song I wrote, the lyrics I really hope you can listen to and connect with, <laughs> as I hope with all of my songs. I want them to be meaningful to you in your own way. I don't want to write the story for you. I want it to be written in your way, your own story. This song is about falling in love with the idea of something or someone, 
Um, I talk a lot about turning the page and reading a book. You know, I think sometimes we fall in love with the idea of something or someone, and this song, I feel, doesn't really go anywhere the way that something like that would. So I really hope you enjoy it. I've never played it for anyone before. <laughs> this is for you all. <laughs> with some funky little detunings and fiddling around, I find that 
you find, I say that word a lot, I find da 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 da. Um, you can find beauty in exploring things, and I think that's one of my favorite parts about music and art and creativity is exploring new things, new realms, new, you know, <laughs> stories, and it's just so exciting. I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. <laughs> I now have the pleasure of introducing the artist extraordinaire, our Grace. <laughs> hey. I don't want to disappoint anyone, but I'm not singing. <laughs> oh. I can't hold a chin. I can hold a paintbrush. <laughs> My band is at home, so. um, and I like to uh, introduce. It's nice to meet you. I, I've texted you, but I haven't met you before. <laughs> I didn't even know you were here, actually. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so thank you, everyone. This um, I won't talk for too long. Um, probably about ten minutes. Um, Kerry will give me a little tingle if I carry on a bit. Um, so welcome, and um, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate. Um, everyone turning up tonight. Um, thank you to Mark, Patricia, Nicole, my God, you guys are just amazing, <laughs> singing beautifully. Um, and um, 
it is it's very exciting to be part of a collaboration of artists sending their message of love and hope through different forms of the arts. So through singing, songwriting, music and visual arts, uh, being a voice for these amazing animals, misunderstood animals. I'd also like to thank um, my wonderful family and friends for being here um, and other guests as well um, tonight for being part of this exhibition. So these exhibitions do not happen without the help of others. So a big thank you to Clint and Brad for this wonderful venue. To, they're the owners of the, the gallery. And to Peter for recording the performances, the lighting and um, advertising the show. Thank you very much. To Helga and Kim for the beautiful food they made for tonight. Um, to Ros, Sue, Jane, Barbara Clark for the photography, Caroline, and of course to Kerry, I can't forget you, I'll be in trouble with my beautiful wife. Um, she's, she's always been there to support me for 28 years now, so <laughs> I don't think she's going to leave. <laughs> also, this exhibition would not be possible without, uh, without Mark Pearson, who approached me in 2021 and asked if I would like to um, do a body of artwork. So um, I said, well, actually, I've been thinking about misunderstood animals for some time, and I had a, um, a lot of stories, some stories and images that I wanted to create. So, um, so last, as you mentioned, last um, in August last year, we did an exhibition in Parliament House when Mark was a member of the New South Wales Legislative Council. Uh, he was a leader of the, um, sorry, leader of the Animal Justice Party. So as you know, there are many misunderstood animals, but I've chosen the rat, the rooster and the crow because of personal life experiences with these um, three animals. Um, so I've owned um, roosters. I've found homes for them because of complaints of neighbours because of their crow. Um, I've watched a family of rats up the backyard nurturing their family and I've watched and listened to the crows throughout my life. So these three animals have stigmas attached to them, so we know them as a the dirty rat, the noisy rooster and the menace crow. So we, we are all here for the same reason. We are here to be loved, to survive, to protect and nurture our family and we need to share this wonderful world with everyone. So this, this exhibition isn't about me, it's about these animals. So I am their voice. I send messages through my artworks and tell stories of love, hope and survival. So I've got some inf interesting information that I'd like to share with you. So in some Aboriginal tribes, the crow is considered as a hero, a spiritual messenger, and intelligent and full of mystery. In other cul cultures, the rooster is, is a sign of prayer, protector of his family, and he loves his girls, as we know. Masculinity, honesty, strength, pride, and sexuality. He's a spiritual teacher to encourage people to use their voice. The rat is a protector of their family. They have the ability to adapt and are incredible survivors, considering they are the most hunted animals. There are 58 species of rats that exist, and the water rat is unique to Australia. In the dreaming, the water rat mated with the duck, apparently, and created the platypus. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Huh? <laughs> so, so most of my works represent true stories, and I've written poems next to some of them as well to tell the story. Um, I painted this awesome guy at the back here. Um, I, always, I call him Saint Mark because. <laughs> what do you think about that, Mark? Because <laughs> Mark is such a protector and has dedicated his whole life to helping and protecting animals. Um, and also, I, I ended the painting in Archibald uh, this year as well. Um, so, I just want to talk about a few of my artworks. How am I going for the time, Kerry? Okay. <laughs> There's um, so three of my artworks I'd like to talk about is uh, Together Forever, which is behind Scott. It's 
Scott, can you move, please? <laughs> um, so it's the one with the, the baby rat is curled up next to the um, adult rat. So the story behind this is quite sad. Um, I have chooks up the back, so of an evening I, I, um, I go and put the chooks away, lock them up. And when I looked, there was a, a dead, dead rat um, on the ground and I, I covered it up and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll go and bury this poor little thing in the morning. Um, my neighbour puts rat bait out, so I often have dead rats around. Um, so I went back in the morning and buried the rat, but when I uncovered it, to my sadness, a baby rat had actually must have crawled and found the adult rat and curled up and died next to it. And that image actually um, broke my heart. It was just a really sad image. So I thought I'd paint it just to, um, so they would not be forgotten. So that's the painting of them. A bit emotional. <laughs> Uh, the other um, painting I'd like to talk about is um, the rooster, the one in the corner over there. Um, he's one of my roosters that I, I've owned. All the roosters that I've painted here I've actually owned and I've had to find safe places for them to go. Um, so there's an animal sanctuary at Martin Creek, a creek that a, a lady called Kathy has about 200 roosters and she, she rescued... She oh, yeah, doing it. <laughs> Yeah, she took three of mine, actually. Um, so she's, she has lots of roosters and other animals as well, and four rescue dogs. She's, she's gorgeous. So, um, Don't the goats. The goats. <laughs> so this the rooster here, his name is Romeo. Um, so th this is a poem I've, I've written for him. A rooster's life is a troubled soul. It's just his crow. His call is a country sound, a gentle sign that all is well. But the neighbours cringe with each crow he brings. It will break my heart if he has to go. I reared him with cuddles and love. I feel his soft, silky feathers with each touch. But with each crow, the neighbours are annoyed. He will have to go, and I say no. But he did go. <laughs> and the neighbours are the ones that usually have noisy parties. So don't worry about that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> The other painting I'd like to talk about is Crow Penalty, which is just over there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so where the crow is just about to take off with the golf ball. <laughs> so the painting came from a, a memory of it as a child. Um, my dad, um, bless his soul, he, um, he taught me how to play golf when I was a kid. So I was walking around the golf course and um, I looked up and there was a crow hanging from a tree with a noose around its neck. And I said to Dad, why have they killed that poor crow? And he said, because they keep, um, you know, running, flying off at the golf balls. So that image of that poor crow actually uh, stay, has stayed with me for all that time. So that's an image of the crow just about to pick up the golf ball with the cross around its neck. And um, I wrote a, there's a little poem I wrote next to it as well. And it's, golf is a competitive sport to have a low score. More strikes you lose, lost balls, penalty calls. A game of skill, a golfer's delight. Par birdie hole in one, but there are hazards ahead. Bunkers, crows, and waterways to defend. But if you touch my ball, you'll ruin my score. Crow falls, he's done. And also, I have hung, I'm nearly finished, guys. <laughs> I've, hung, I've hung two paintings of the whales in the exhibition, they're just two there, because um, in the 1800s and, and early 1900s, whales were misunderstood. They were hunted for their products and oil and baleen. They were known as the ferocious monsters of the ocean and hunted to near extinction. The whaling indus industry ceased in New South Wales in 1978 and it was recorded there was only 500 humpback whales left. So over the years we have learnt to love and respect them. We now know them as the gentle giants of the ocean. Now their numbers have increased to around 20,000 plus, so which is amazing. So maybe in time our thoughts of other misunderstood animals will also change, hopefully. So just I'd like to leave you with a quote by Jill Robinson, founder of the Asian Animal Foundation. 
Consider that animals like us have one life. It is their life, their only life, just as important to them as our life is to us. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.